So I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people here that have a varying degree of, of sailing knowledge and expertise. So for today, what we're going to do is we're going to go over a general you know, sailing curriculum. So we're going to go over lingo, parts of the boat, how to sail, how to sail well. And then each class will, will get progressively more, more in depth into sailing. So more into sailing dynamics, how things actually work. And then finally into racing, hopefully, will last maybe one or two classes. So, Jake, remember? It's a bad so this is a picture this. of a 420. It's, it's about 13, 14 feet long. This is what we primarily sail in collegiate sailing. It's a small boat, uh, it's <coughs> relatively stable, depending on how big you are and how much weight you can shift around. But uh, all right, Jake, go ahead. So parts of a boat. This isn't a 420. This is actually a butterfly. But to start off with, we have our tiller, and our tiller is the wood stick, and it's going to be in the cockpit. You're going to be holding on to this for the majority of the time and it's connected to what we call the rudder. So the rudder is actually what's gonna steer the boat. And it does that by deflecting water one way or the other. So imagine my hand is the rudder. So when you turn the rudder in the water, water's gonna be deflected off to one side. And when that happens, it's gonna turn the boat one direction or the other. Now, when it's attached to a tiller, it's gonna be the exact opposite of driving a car. So everyone's used to, you know, when you turn your wheel, to, let's say to the right, your car's gonna go to the right. Now, with the tiller, it's gonna be the exact opposite. If you take your tiller to the right side, what we call the starboard side, the boat's actually going to go to port. And so the key thing to remember about those two elements is that the rudder steers the boat and the tiller steers the rudder. So keep that in mind for later. Next is we have our centerboard and our daggerboard. And they're located right here. <coughs> on this boat, we have a daggerboard. It's on this butterfly here. Now, on the 420 we'll be sailing, we have what's called a centerboard because it swings, well, not to say freely, we're able to control it. It swings in a motion just like this. And what that does, that, that does two things for us. It provides us with, with lateral stability, and it also provides us with a little bit of uh, what's called tracking. So the boat is, is going to have a tendency to slide one way or the other, or slip. And so that's going to that's be in the way and help us maintain a very straight course through the water. Next, we have what's called freeboard. And these are more dimensions of a boat. So freeboard is from, you've got your water line here, or what's called your LWL, your load water line. So when the boat is under load, so like let's say I, I jump into the boat, the boat's gonna naturally rest at some position. And when it rests at that position, that's where the LWL is gonna be located. All right, so from that LWL to this black line here, which is called a gunnel, it's spelled gunwale, but we pronounce it gunnel, that's called our freeboard. So it's essentially the distance from the deck of the boat down the water. Next, we have our beam. And our beam is how <coughs> wide the boat is. And that's going to be at the widest point. So let's say, for example, the 420 has a beam of roughly five and a half feet, give or take a few inches. And so that's going to be at the widest part of the boat. Because the boat's actually going to be, you know, obviously very pointed at the, at the, at the bow and, you know, relatively wider uh, midway through. And so that midpoint is going to roughly be where our beam is going to be located. And that's going to vary based on boats and based on conditions. So once again, our LWL is from the edge of our deck down to our water line. All right. And next we have our length overall. And the reason why we have these two dimensions is because on a lot of boats, there's going to be quite a difference between our LWL and our LOA. On some boats, you could have upwards of four or five, four or five feet of difference between the LOA and the LWL. All right, so the length <coughs> overall is from the very tip of our stern to the very tip of our bow here. So that, those are pretty key dimensions to keep in mind. All right, Jake, go ahead. Next, we have directional terminology. So if we're sitting on a boat, as we can see here on the slide, we're going to want to be able to let people know, okay, let's say we see the dock, for example. We want to let people know on the boat where that dock is. And so to start off with, we've got port and starboard. So port is going to be, if you're facing forward on our boat, it's going to be the left side. Starboard is going to be on your right side. The way I was taught this is that port and left both have four letters. Starboard and right both have more than four letters. So that's a relatively <coughs> easy way to look at it. Also keep in mind that if you're facing aft, so if you're facing like directly looking back in the boat, these are going to be opposite. So the port side is then going to become, the right, or the right side is going to become the port side and the left side is going to become the starboard side. Does that make sense? So it's all it's all dependent on where you're facing. Port and starboard don't change, whereas left and right can. Next we have a head, a stern, and a beam. A head is obviously anything forward of the boat. 
So you can see here, anything in this general area we can say is a head. And the slide indicates here that we have points. You don't have to worry about those. That's more for larger boat sailing and not necessarily for sailing on four twins. Just keep in mind that a head means anything forward of the boat. Next we have beam, or a beam. So remember that that, uh, that beam is going to be roughly in the middle of our boat. And so since it's in the middle of our boat, anything that's going to be, let's say, 90 degrees off our bow, <coughs> anywhere in this region here, we're going to say it's going to be off of our beam. Or we can say dead a beam if it's directly 90 degrees off the boat. And then finally, a stern. So anything that's behind the boat. So back to <coughs> my hand is, that's roughly on the Yeah, that'd be great. I spoke earlier about a tiller and a rudder. We don't have a rudder with us, but we have a tiller. And so the tiller is essentially a stick. A lot of times it'll be made out of wood. In this case, it's made out of, out of metal and plastic. And so this is what's going to be attached to our rudder. So this is going to steer the rudder, which in turn will steer the boat. And this here is what we call a tiller extension. And so at times, especially if you're single-handed in a boat, so if you're out there by yourself, you're going to want to be able to have more maneuverability to move forward and aft on your boat. And that's where your tiller extension is going to come into play. Sorry, Booth, do you have something? No, what do you, which color? Ooh, I'll take the gray. All right, which color? I'll take the blue. All right. Well, that is another one. It wasn't like... All right. And then, just so you guys know, these are racing ponies. So these go over the life jacket. You wanted to like see what they look like. And you can go ahead and pass that around if you like. And also, he brought in two things. These are what we call sailing gloves right here. And they're made out of hard canvas. I see hard, but you know, rough canvas. And they help because if you feel a line, especially when it's under load, if it runs through your hands, it's going to burn the heck out of your hands. So it's always good to have either a pair of sailing gloves or tape your hands up decently so you don't burn all the skin off of them. Not to get too graphic, <laughs> but keep, keep that in mind. All right, go ahead, next slide, please. All right, so now we have parts of a sail. And this is going to be pretty key to be able to understand how a sail is going to work and what we want to look for in a sail. So to start off with, we want to look at the leading edge of our sail, so the forward edge of our sail. So you see here we've got our mainsail, which is going to be typically the larger sail, and it's also going to be the most aft sail, so the sail that's back in the boat. So our main sail is going to have different parts. They're going to be the same both in our main and our jib here. So our luff is the leading edge of our sail. So it's the forward edge, as you can see here. And so it's that entire area. It's not just that, you know, that, that little bit of space. It's the entire sail. Next we have our leech, which is the outer edge, or what they call the trailing edge of our sail. Finally, we have our foot. So just like you have a foot on your body, you're going to have a foot of a sail. So it's going to be at the bottom of your sail, just like your foot is at the bottom of your body. Next, we've got different corners of our sail. So to start off with, just like we had the feet, we're going to have a head. And so the head is going to be the very top corner of our sail. Next, we're going to have our tack, which is going to be the lower forward corner here. And then finally, our clue right here. So for all of you out there that probably like to know this, the easy way to remember the corners is tack head clue, THC. It's a very easy way to remember it. <laughs> fix, fix that up. Uh, next we've got our jib. And so our jib is all these, all these parts are going to be the same. So the luff, the leech, the foot, clue, the tack, and also the head. So it's not going to be, it's going to be based on forward and aft opposed to where we're going to learn here in a minute where the mast is. So just remember all these points are going to be the same on each sail. Next we have battens here. And battens are going to, are going to vary uh, either in length or in quantity based on the type of boat you're sailing and what type of sails you have. On most boats you'll have three to four 